I thought we'd have a nice video with a beautiful background. I'm in America, in Wisconsin. I'm here for the CrossFit Games and this is my walk to go watch the CrossFit Games. If I'm looking tired, it's because I've been yelling all day, come on! <laughs> anyway, um, we got a situation which I thought I'd share with you guys. And if you're not that experienced as a landlord, perhaps you might just, you know, lodge this one in your brain and um, recognize it when it happens. And if you are very experienced as a landlord, you're probably gonna go, oh yes, yeah, Suze, <laughs> that's happened to me. Um, all right, let's talk tenants. Um, now, generally, I, I actually enjoy having tenants. Uh, they, they're a good lot, uh, but you know, there's the odd one. And um, we found this three times in the last two months. Um, so we have generally very good relationships with our tenants. We're pretty decent landlords. We never rip anybody off ever. We only ever return, like we try and return deposits. We really want them to tidy up before they leave. You know, all that kind of malarkey. We're decent, but we're also quite black and white. So if you do damage something, you got pay. Um, uh, uh, and and then um, we have a full-time handyman that works obviously full-time in my business. He's worked there for two, two and a half years now. Oh, dogs, American dogs. There you go. Um, and, and he's really, I mean, he has keys to my own house. He's 100% trustworthy, as are my team. So I find it quite bemusing um, because we do inspections every three months and then we also have a very proactive rolling uh, program of repairs. So we don't want to be reactively called out. When we do inspections, we leave a little bit of time for our handyman to repair anything he sees in the house. Um, I mean, obviously if it's tenant damage, we'll, we'll charge them, but generally we're, we're just looking to improve the house, paint it, make sure there are no cracks, rebuild any kind of garden walls, make sure no water seeping through gutters, you know, all of that kind of malarkey, right? So we're good landlords. And what I find fascinating, this has happened three times in the last couple of months, we've had tenants who repeatedly have been like, stop, I need to know exactly when you're coming. Um, and uh, we've got one particular tenant who is like, stop, um, I must be there um, if, if anybody's coming into the house. Now, that frustrates me. It, partly because I know our handyman is so ridiculously trustworthy and such a brilliant guy. Um, but, but, all, but I think it's mainly that. And, and we just haven't, for whatever reason, developed a relationship of trust. And then we find out why. And um, we had to go into one of the houses, in, in fact we had, what was it? Ah yeah, it was a council inspection because we're licensed in that house. Now we wrote to them, we told them we were coming, um, the, ca the council guy was really happy. I went and discovered, you know, the experienced people are shouting at the screen going, Suze, yeah they had pets. And they've ruined the carpet. Uh, the second house, uh, we discovered they have a great big dog. And the third house, they have cats. And presumably they've slightly ruined the carpet as well, but I, ha I don't know about the third house. So all three houses who have been like, stop, <laughs> not having this, are really doing it because they're covering up the, the fact they got pets. Now you'd think that because it's in our contract, you're not allowed pets, you're contravening the contract and you can say, hey, no, thank you. That's a section eight based on behavior. Nope, our legal advisors say no. So you've got two choices now. Um, I, you can either um, evict, because you, I don't take pets in my houses. I love animals, but I don't love the damage animals cause. Uh, and I'm not prepared to uh, put up with the damage that animals cause, unfortunately. So you can either evict or you can do what we've done with um, the first set of the three tenants, which is say, look, we know that you've got cats. The landlady's been in. She's seen damage to her carpet in two places, which quite clearly has to be replaced. Uh, so in order for you guys to stay, we're going to have to double the deposit. Now, obviously, um, and, and so we've allowed them to pay up over two months, not immediately. Um, oh, and that's my team there. They're, they're kind of nicer than me. I was a bit like straight away because I saw the damage to my carpets, um, which is just a pain in the neck, really. Um, and uh, But obviously, the one thing we then have to do is when they give us double the deposit, we have to uninsure the original deposit and re or, or rather we have to insure the new deposit to the correct amount because otherwise as uh, you know you've then got the problem of not having given them prescribed information and insured the deposit within 30 days so you've got two choices I'm kind of sitting um, uh, teeth gnashingly grumpy about doubling the deposit uh, uh, but what I've just yeah uh, and, and really what I'm gonna do in the future if anybody else is like stop you're not coming in which we had three sets and all three of them have got pets I'm, I'm going to 
uh, because clearly they were hiding the pets. I'm going to just have a reason um, to go in myself to really check whether there are pets because I'm allergic to cats. So if I start sneezing, they got cats. So just be mindful that sometimes there are um, secondary agendas, shall we just say, uh, the, the, the reason your tenants are um, refusing to let you in unless they've got exact knowledge of the precise minute, second and hour that you intend to go in. <laughs> and it could be they're hiding their pets. In which case, what do you do? Me, I double the deposit and say, you know, that those are the circumstances under which we're going to continue this relationship. Probably sensible. <laughs>